This is São Paulo. It's rush hour. Cars are everywhere. Like a sea. A sea of cars. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Muitos. A lot of cars. It's a whole city on wheels. It's struggling to move but slowly grinding to a halt. Sao Paulo, it's a very big city and there's too much cars. No city in the world can afford to have so many cars. We have seven million cars, seven million. We don't have space. Mornings are not easy for working moms like Fabiana Crespo. She has to wake up early and often has a hard time getting the children to eat their breakfast. But that's nothing compared to the stress that lies ahead when she leaves home. I think we are very slaves in the transit of São Paulo. I, for example, have the habit of listening to the radio that talks about transit. Então, assim, é, é impressionante, porque você liga a rádio e você vai se orientando para ver como é que você vai fazer para chegar. E aí se estressa todo dia, e eu tenho um filho pequeno. E, ó, ele às vezes no carro ele fica assim. <risos> e você, além do estresse do trânsito, você tem a criança que você quer acudir, e você também não pode parar no meio do caminho, né? Então você tem que continuar, porque senão você também vai atrapalhar. Então o estresse maior é esse, eu não quero que ele sofra também. Fabiana sets off for work. Baby Rodrigo is too little for school, so he comes with her. Fabiana runs the family business and can be with her baby all day, including the long hours spent in traffic. The beginning of the traffic. She's caught up somewhere here. On a bad day, it can take more than two hours to get to the office. Então, na verdade, eu acho que a gente fica já acostumou, né? Deu com essa com essa coisa toda a gente acaba acostumando com essa vida. Mas é uma é uma sensação de impotência porque assim você não tem o que fazer. Ou você aceita que o trânsito está parado e que liga um som e vai curtindo, ou você pira assim. For what seems like hours, they don't move. Rodrigo looks fine, but the endless stop and go drives Fabiana up the wall. And there is nothing to do, except wait and turn on the radio. Meio dia, 31 minutos. Sul America Transit was an instant hit when it appeared five years ago. It's dedicated to reporting traffic jams, 24 hours a day. Listeners call in to report bad traffic or to share how they've managed to avoid it. Vitória Ribeiro is one of the reporters. Part of her job is to hit the streets to find the jams. That's quite easy. There's an accident and there's this some more as well. Oh yeah, the traffic and also an ambulance. Yes, there's an ambulance over there. Uh, see, uh, it was a car and two motos. Two car motorcycles. and two motorbikes. Yes. But Vitoria also has to find alternative ways for their listeners to flee the gridlock. And that is very often an impossible mission. It's a war. Everybody is very selfish once they get in the car. 
We tried, the radio tries, you know, the best to explain and try to teach everybody that everybody is in the same boat and uh, you have to, to pass through this. There's no way you can escape. Fabiana is already tired and stressed. And that's even before she has begun her day at work. For Rodrigo, it's all good. With mom nearby, he promptly slips off the traffic. Perda de tempo que a gente tem no trânsito é um tempo que você poderia estar fazendo alguma coisa produtiva para o seu negócio. Né? It has an impact on the cost of living in São Paulo. Everything will become more expensive. You know, economic activities, uh, delivery of goods. This has a major impact in the city because if you have a truck and this truck cannot make more than six to eight deliveries instead of 15 to 20, you need two trucks. Even so, in the middle of all this, there are some who found an opportunity. When cars get stuck, motorbikes rule. Drivers can only watch and envy while riders flash past their cars, often very fast and very close. These are São Paulo's motor boys, motorbike couriers with a taste for speed and adventure. Car drivers complain they're dangerous and reckless, but in rush hour the motor boys can be the only alternative for deliveries really in a rush. Ah, eu acho que é um serviço indispensável. É indispensável porque tudo se parte do trânsito. Pá, você vai pegar um taxista para levar um documento. O tempo que o taxista vai levar para chegar aqui no, no, no Largo da Batata, que é acho que menos de um quilômetro daqui, eu vou chegar lá no centro. Então é indispensável. Ok, coloca para fora que daqui a pouco. And here's another man who's making money, good money out of traffic. Jorge Bitar runs a helicopter taxi company and business is booming. Os negócios têm previsão de crescer 10% esse ano e o benefício para as pessoas é notável porque conseguem cumprir vários compromissos no mesmo dia. Então no fim das contas com o tráfego aumentando, teu negócio acaba beneficiado. Sim, acaba. É uma coisa ruim que acaba trazendo um benefício para nós. Jorge has 16 helicopters. They rarely stay grounded for long. In fact, São Paulo is thought to have one of the largest fleets of private helicopters in the world. And more are taken to the skies every day. More and more rich people and companies are buying their own choppers to fly around town. Demand for pilots is on the rise. They are flying people like Sergio Alcebiades. He is wealthy, of course but not super rich. He buys a monthly package of flight hours to hop between the many helipads of São Paulo. How long do you think it will take, more or less, to do this trip uh, if you are driving in bad traffic? One hour and a half. How long it will take now? Just 10 minutes. That's not bad. Not bad. Yeah. How does it feel? Good. Flying for him is not about fun or ostentation. It's a rather cold business calculation. As a corporate legal consultant, his hours are worth too much to be wasted in traffic. Back in the air, we took a look at what Sergio was escaping. Miles and miles of stationary traffic. Every day, hundreds of thousands of people get stuck in gridlock down there. And actually, it's only getting worse. The worst day so far, there was 250 kilometers of congestion in Sao Paulo. The gridlock is a big problem for drivers but also an opportunity for poor street sellers who can pitch their products on foot while wheels aren't moving. 
gente tem uns fica meio estressado mas a maioria gosta da gente que também na, na realidade como muito quando tem um transe muito forte né quando tem vendedor quando vê a gente vendendo um carregador com o aparelho dele tá desligado ele fala puxa vida hoje chegou tá precisando de você São Paulo, a city with some of the worst traffic jams in the world. It's really hard to get from A to B in São Paulo with all this heavy traffic. It's frustrating to be stuck here already late. And in the middle of this chaos, you have the traffic wardens of São Paulo, the marronzinhos, trying to bring some order. And probably it's the toughest job in the city. Alessandra Monteiro is one of 2,500 marronzinhos. Her days are spent trying to get people to move. Porque esse horário não dá, né? Então é que esse horário não dá, infelizmente. Tá bom? Orientei, né? Eles estão eles estão terminando, eles vão parar de fazer a cara de descarga, eles vão sair do lugar, não é? Você mora de uma maneira educada, eles eles têm que responder de uma maneira educada, né? One car blocking one lane for 15 minutes can cause three kilometers of congestion. Marronzinhos have to work fast to clear the way. In chaotic traffic, small accidents are rife. No one can avoid it. This police car has taken a knock while chasing robbers. For Alessandra, the reasons don't matter. She just wants to get it shifted. Pra não refletir, ela contribui muito com a lentidão, né? Então, um minuto a mais que você demora para remover, vira 10 minutos a mais de lentidão. Então, quanto mais rápido, mais eficiente fica. There is a delay while crime scene investigators take a look, but eventually the accident is cleared. Alessandra can go on her way, looking for more trouble. Ending congestion is a dream every citizen in every large city around the world has. We will never end congestion. We would probably bring congestion to a more reasonable um, standard. Okay? We will never end congestion. Because when we end congestion, people will be attracted to use more car and that would bring congestion. You know, we have to reach a kind of equilibrium point in which people would say it's better to use the public transport because I would travel faster than I would travel using the car. This is the man in charge of public transport in Sao Paulo State. Spending on mass transportation has been on the rise, but not enough to make up for decades of underinvestment. He wanted to show me the city's state-of-the-art metro. People in São Paulo are proud of it, but the network is very small. Only 80 kilometers of track, about five times less than London or New York. So, much more is needed to get people out of their cars. We don't have space enough for all the cars you need. For instance, here in Sao Paulo, we have 7 million cars, 7 million. We don't have space. We have to make it some, some kind of enforcement. Then the culture 
your charge. You mean a congestion charge like yes, there is in yeah, London? Like something like that, something yeah. like in London, like in Singapore, Stockholm, I think so. Will politicians be brave enough?